Welcome back to my channel, and tonight we shall be going over some of the important changes that have come to the new A10C2 tank killer update. We will take a look at the new interior, exterior, flight model changes, then move on over to the laser guided rockets, and check out just how effective they really are against light armor, all the way up to something sturdy like a T90. Now as you can see, the exterior model is just absolutely gorgeous. When the lighting hits it just right, you can really see all the rivets and wrinkles in the skin. As well as how bumped the nose is after all those refueling boom accidents. Even the pilot body has gotten a bit of a facelift. You can see that ED is really trying to catch up to Heepler in terms of pilot resolution, and that honestly is not a bad thing. Now, if you're transferring from the regular A10C over to the A10C2, you're gonna need to double check your controls because I found that there were some issues. If I press escape and go to the controls and go A10C real and go to the HOTAS section, uh, the one thing that I for sure was off is the trim. The trim was obviously uh, view, which is normal. This always happens with new modules. But the thing that really tripped me up was that the coolie hat was done improperly. Uh, this was wrong. Only the left and right was done correctly, and the up and down was not. So double check your coolie hat controls for sure. And obviously go into your axis commands. And make sure that you take away everything from the rudder pedals, because everything's bound to your flight controls, like pitch roll and, and whatnot. Because, I don't know, DCS still does that for some stupid reason. But the pitch and roll had the correct axis tune that I have over here. So that carried on over perfectly well. Uh, the only thing I had to do was invert my vertical uh, whole test loop. And that's pretty much it. Uh, everything else was uh, pretty much on par with uh, what it was supposed to be. So if you would like to change how the cockpit looks, you can go into your options, your specials tab, go to the A10C2 section, and you can change from uh, factory new to aged. I don't know which one I like more, but uh, you let me know down in the comments below. Are you team new or are you team old? Obviously, the main concept here that we have that's new is the, the helmet mounted system display. Now, this display uh, has a control panel that is now active over here. And all you really have to worry about is setting it into the on position. And we still don't have the radio panel over here, so we're missing uh, the correct radio panel on the side. And of course, the helmet mounted display. So if I press DMS left long, I can turn it on. And if I set the coolie hat uh, up twice, one for a heads up display, which it's already at, and another time up, you'll see the little dot. And now if I press DMS up and down, I can uh, work the intensity of this thing. And boy, is this a ton of fun to use. So I got some targets up ahead here at this airfield. And first thing I'm gonna wanna do is hit the air to ground, make sure that the target pod is actually active. So if you take a look, it's now looking at our current position and I have the nice little wedding cake over it. Uh, I do have some tanks just uh, sputtered around. For instance, I have a row of tanks over here. So, you know, there's several different ways that you can get your target pod on this. I have to make sure that I make this my uh, soy, so coolie head up short, and now I can use the slew sensor, and it slews that little box that I can move around as I please. Um, I could set this as my new speed, so if I press TMS up long, that'll set it as to my current speed, and I can then go to my targeting pod and just simply press China head forward long, and uh, now yeah, now it's looking at those tanks that we have over there. So really quick and easy way of getting your uh, targeting pod on uh, on target essentially. Um, 
and as you zoom out, the box gets bigger. As you zoom in, it gets smaller. So it's got a really nice representation of what's going on on there. If I press DMS left short, I have the target pod overlaid at the bottom of the Jahemix. Um, it's a little difficult to see depending on the contrast. As you can see, uh, white black hot actually looks a little better. I wish I could zoom in on that for you, but uh, it's, a, it's a weird image. I'm not sure I'm going to use this very much. It's going to get really complicated, but it's nice. It's nice. It's there, you know, if I wanted it. Uh, but DMS left short to get rid of that. So uh, here's a funky little thing. Um, there is a command in order for me to move my cursor over to some vehicles. For instance, I could point at the beginning of this runway and I should be able to press DMS right long in order to slew the current target pod to my current cursor. Because the target pod's looking over here, the cursor's over here. So um, what you first have to do is that the box that I slewed from the cursor is now over here. So I need to reset the box first to my cursor. So I need to press uh, China Hat F short real quick which resets everything and you can see the uh, the lines are over here. So now if I were to try and press DMS right long, uh, you'll see that nothing really happens. It's kind of bugged out or maybe I'm not fully understanding the, uh, the implementation, but one of the things you have to be careful of is that China hat aft short no longer uh, resets the targeting pod to boresight mode. If you have the targeting pod selected um, and you press China hat aft short, it will instead go into the laser search function. Uh, supposedly, this is actually done correctly. Uh, the real A10 doesn't actually have that feature to pour sight the target pod. So what we would have to do is go into standby, go back to air to ground, and now switch the coolie head back up here, and then press DMS right long. Uh, and then I'll be able to move the target pod to wherever the heck I want. And this introduces a second problem where depending on where my head is when I press DMS right long, it it skids the uh, the whole targeting pod off to the side. So I need to keep my head as still as possible when I do this. Press DMS right long, and even then, you know it's kind of it's kind of buggy. There's two ways to stop this. Uh, I can press the slew sensor real quick uh, with the targeting pod selected. So I'm gonna coolie head right long. I'm gonna touch the slew sensor real quick, and then I can, you know, slew it around and ground stabilize it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, I think that. I think that's a bug. I don't think this is supposed to happen. So you know, but it's a first implementation, so I guess they're gonna be working on it. It's still really cool to be flying around and just look somewhere and be like, hey, I want to target that, and then just uh, really quickly switch to the targeting pod, slew it, and boom, that's it, done. Uh, otherwise, just use the other method, which is uh, with the Jahemix selected as soy. Um, slew sensor this over to whatever you want it, right? And press TMS up long, set it as a speed, and then try to head forward long and slave the target pot over. It's just that at this point, even if you press try to head aft short, uh, you're going to have a problem where you're no longer going to be able to press DMS right long to slave the target pod over to whatever it is you're looking at. So you're gonna have to reset it. And then it works again with DMS right long. So a little finicky, not gonna lie. It's a, it's a little finicky, but I mean, with enough practice, I think you, everybody's gonna be able to get it. So still super useful. And of course you have DMS right short to set mark points. So where to, wherever it is that you have this cursor, I can just go ahead and start setting up mark points. Uh, of course, you can't delete mark points, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm gonna move this over here. Um, right now, I'm using the targeting pot to slew. So let me switch over to the Jahemix. And now I can use the cursor on Jahemix to set uh, the mark points with TMS right short. So there's one tank group. There's another tank group. Here's another tank group. And here's one right here. And I think there's one right here somewhere. I can't really see. So, hey, let's, uh, let's move our targeting pod over there. Check it out. This. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's definitely a tank group there. Just set a mark point with the targeting pod and boom. We got all the targeting, uh, the mark points set. That's pretty cool. The only thing is that uh, I can see all of my waypoints. 
but I cannot see all of the mark points that I've set up. I wonder if I have to switch this over to mark point. Ah, yes. So if I switch it to mark point, then I can see all the mark points that I've set up on the map. Which works exactly the same way as you'd expect on the TAD, so, you know, it's, uh, this, that's normal. Alright, so remember how in the past we used to um, have the capability of broadcasting speed? Uh, it used to be DMS left long. This is now changed. And as you can see on this HOTAS list, this is the official A10C2 tank killer HOTAS list. So you see exactly what your controls can do, depending on what system you have. Um, the, in order to broadcast your SPI, uh, what you need to do is press TMS left long. And now I'm broadcasting the SPI over here. So it's not DMS, it is now TMS. So that's, that's definitely one of the weird things that I've found. Uh, which means that now DMS left long will turn the helmet mounted sight system on or off no matter what SOI you have set. Doesn't matter if it's left, right MFD, heads up display, or the Jahamix, DMS left long will now turn the Jahamix on or off with DMS left long. So, you know, something to note. <laughs> Definitely something to note. All right, and uh, the next thing that we did was to take a look at the rockets. So we have two flavors to choose from. Uh, we have the uh, 282s and 151s. Now the 151s are high explosives, while the 282s are armor piercing. Uh, now Matt said that uh, you shouldn't bother trying to kill tanks with the uh, either one of those things. They're only meant for uh, non-armored and soft armor targets. But uh, you know, we like to experiment. So here's what we found. So I just selected the uh, the first group. Uh, these are just a bunch of uh, lightly armored uh, APCs. Let's select the 151s, which are the high explosives. And let's just go ahead and turn our latch on because I don't want to hold the laser button down. And uh, the range of these things, uh, they say it's five nautical miles, but we've been able to shoot out towards six nautical miles. 6.5. So what I like to use is the slant range over here for the rockets at the bottom or the slant range for the target pod, which should be pretty close to what you see over here. And it doesn't matter if you start firing the laser before or after. Uh, it, we've seen that it makes almost no difference, but it is fun to watch these things fly. <laughs> so we're at 5.1 where I can just go ahead and shoot it. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot and then lasers on. Now it's tracking. Remember, this is the high explosive one. And as you can see, it kills the APC. Uh, the funny thing is that those rockets don't seem to turn for some reason. Uh, I thought maybe that's just how they are designed, but uh, you'll see here, I fired this off at uh, over seven nautical miles. So it's gonna be just out of range for this thing. Now notice how it doesn't spin, right? I don't know if there's a battery involved because I know that some air-to-air -air missiles have batteries involved that they die and the missile goes inert or what the problem is. Uh, it may be a laser uh, range difference, but you can see that it's latched onto that laser. It's flying straight towards the target that I have. It's trying to pitch up for it. And in a second here, it's gonna stop. It's gonna slew off to the side and it's gonna start spinning. And there, it lost it. Now it spins like I thought it should, and it falls short. And this is at seven point something nautical miles. So we found like 6.5 is pretty much the, uh, the range, the maximum range before this happens. So it's something to keep note of. And I know that the laser is supposed to be active only up to around six nautical miles, but it seems like the way it's coded is like it sees the laser, it definitely is tracking it. But then it gets like this last stage where it just, I don't know, it just stops. It does its own thing, starts spinning. I don't know. It's weird. That's not the point. Let's go ahead and take a look at how effective the armor piercing ones are against armor. All right. So here I am and I'm facing one of these T-55s. We've also found that these rockets are kind of inconsistent. Sometimes they do damage. Sometimes they do no damage. The most consistent hits that we've seen is if you aim in the rear, not at the top of the turret, where you'd think the armor would be the thinnest, but in the engine block in the rear, right where these two exhaust ports are. So if I switch to point mode, 
lays, and I'm going to fire one of these off. You'll see that it has damaged it. It's moving, so it definitely felt it. And if we take a look at the health of this tank, uh, you'll see that it actually got about a third of its health down. So I'm going to select a brand new tank, and I'm going to fire off three of these missiles into the butt end of the tank. Lasers on. Let's see what happens. Boom. And three is all it takes to take care of a T-55. So as you'll notice, the uh, T-72 does have reactive armor on the uh, sides, the front, and the top. Uh, so we were testing out to see whether or not hitting it in the turret in the top back where there is no reactive armor would do anything. And the answer to that is uh, no. Uh, it either wasn't registering any uh, damage whatsoever or the reactive armor was bouncing back the, uh, the rockets. So the place where we had to shoot these things at is basically the engine section where the oil containers are in the back. And that gave us the most consistent result in terms of uh, killing these things. Unlike the T-55, however, the T-72 requires four rockets in order to kill it. Uh, three will bring it down to about a quarter health, uh, which could be desirable if you just want to finish it off with guns right afterwards. But um, if you want to kill it, four is really the way to go. And what you have to do is also make sure that you spam them really quickly, one, two, three, four. Because if there is too much of a gap between the rockets, uh, the tank will actually react and it will turn to the side. And when it does so, that last rocket is gonna hit the reactive armor on this side and it's gonna completely repel the rocket. So uh, yeah, you're gonna be wasting that last shot. I'm gonna laze and fire. And boom. Here's that example of uh, the missile basically doing absolutely zero damage. The T-72 didn't feel anything. Uh, he basically uh, didn't even move. So there's that silly situation where we don't, we're not really sure what's happening. And it's being really inconsistent in terms of when it actually deals damage and not. Uh, we think that maybe if you're too shallow, the rockets may be hitting underneath the tank and it's not doing anything. But we're at 10,000 feet, and the target is basically right down here, right below us. So that really shouldn't be the case. So we try to aim up here, but not at the top of the turret. And there you go. So four will bring it down to basically zero health. I really don't understand how this thing is still alive, but... All you would need at this point is to just basically squirt the gun at him, or man, almost anything really. 0 0.01 seconds of a trigger pull will kill this thing at this point. So if you want a guaranteed kill, um, you would have to use five. But at that point, you're, you're really starting to waste a lot of rockets. So four, if you want to damage all of these tanks and then finish it off with guns, or five, if you just want a guaranteed kill like this. And there we go. There's an example of the last one not hitting fast enough. He turned to the side, and uh, yeah, the last one just basically did zero damage. Boom. So definitely you can use these rockets to kill these things. Now let's step it up a notch and use the same amount of rockets, five for the T-80s, and see what kind of damage we do. Boom. Five is all it takes to kill this thing. And let's check out what a T-90 will be like. For those of you who have tried, you know that even trying to guns a T-90 is, uh, it's tough work. It's, uh, it's not easy. You have to get uncomfortably close to kill these things, so... This is pretty interesting to see what happens. I fired six, but as you can see, the fifth one actually managed to kill it off. So, there you go. It looks like it takes five, 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 four, and then even the heat round, a single one will kill an APC and anything that is uh, basically non-armored. That was pretty cool to see. Uh, the only other thing that we did was uh, to check what kind of angle off these things will actually pick up a signal. And based on our findings, we saw that uh, if you're off bore by uh, 20 degrees or higher, 
uh, the rocket will not pick up the uh, the, the laser signal. So uh, we would say around 15 degrees off bore uh, is about the maximum you should uh, ever try. So if we try and fire from here, you'll see that the Hydra is just not picking anything up. And then as we start getting closer, There, uh, that's the angle that it does so. So roughly speaking, we're looking at this being our bearing of zero, zero, 007 degrees. And the tank is uh, essentially right there, almost 30 degrees. But uh, let's be generous and say no more than 20 degrees off bore. It also depends on your angle, it depends how close or far away you are. So this, yeah, it's, it's not a scientific method by any means, but uh, let's just say, try not to be more than 20 degrees off bore from the target. Uh, from here, she'll be able to find the laser and guide ourselves over to the tank. So that's pretty cool, I guess. The other thing that we've noticed is it also has air to air capability, uh, believe it or not. Uh, I would have to use the uh, the targeting pod and try and find him and lock him up using the diamond. Boom, I got him locked up. And if I fire the laser, uh, it should track him. He's a little far, but he should be coming towards me here soon. So let's see, I'm gonna fire the laser. Let's see if it tracks. <laughs> That's... That's just stupid. That's just dumb. And uh, lastly, I took a look at the, uh, the performance of the A-10 in terms of how she turns. So for instance, we are pretty heavily loaded right now. Uh, we got some bombs. These are the new GBUs, the 54s. Wasn't really too interested in testing these out because they are the same thing as GBU 38s or GBU 12s. There's really no difference. The only thing that's different is the fact that you can either use laser or GPS coordinates. So looking at the performance of the aircraft, uh, remember before if you went past the solid tone and went into the chopped tone, uh, you would start stalling your wing. But this no longer is the case. As you can see, I can ride between the two signals and my wing is just fine. Uh, speaking of which, the turn rate is actually relatively decent and the amount of speed that I lose doing this is not that bad. I can hold 195 knots in the chop nose tone, but I am losing my turn radius here as I do this. And if I were to dump my munitions completely, you will notice that in a 360 turn, let's say around 290 knots, I'll be able to retain a lot of airspeed by the time I roll back around. I'm gonna try and ride the solid tone as best as I can. But look at that. Look at the turn radius. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be honest, fighters, uh, fighters gonna have to watch out. and 220 knots. So, you know, we lost, what, 60 knots in the 360 turn? That's, that's not bad. That's really not bad. So this means that, you know, fighters now, you know, they can't really get too cheeky. If they do, they're gonna pay a very hefty price for doing so. So, I don't know about you, but a $10 for an upgrade like this, I think it's really worth my money. So in any case, I hope you guys enjoyed this little preview of what the A10C2 tank carrier looks like. 